Shakespeare once wrote, to spit or not to spit? That is the question. Howdy, I'm Andy Lee with Family History Fanatics, and this is an episode of a segment of DNA. Today, I wanna to talk about whether or not you should get tested. My personal advice is, yes, everyone should. But that'd be too easy. There is a small group of people who probably should consider not being tested. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, first off, DNA is a record. It's a record of our relationships. And unlike a paper record, DNA doesn't lie. If it says you're related to somebody, you're related to them. So when you think about this in your life or maybe some of your ancestors' lives, who would not want to be tested for DNA? So the first group of people who wouldn't want to be tested for DNA is if you have some family secret. And by that, I mean you know of or you were the cause of some non-paternal event. What is a non-paternal event? Well, that is when the paper records record a father who isn't the father. We usually know from paper records that the mother was there at the birth of the child. It's kind of hard to falsify that. But the paper records that have the fathers listed, you're relying on the mother or the partner of the mother to say who the father was. And that's not always the case. The second group of people who might not want to be tested is sperm donors or egg donors who wanted to remain anonymous. Now, why would that be? Well, if you are a donor of sperm or egg, your genetic material may be out there in your offspring. And DNA is going to tell them exactly who their parent is. In fact, even with the non-paternal events, even with the family secrets, DNA is going to tell you the relationships you have with other people that have been tested. Now, while you may fit into one of these two groups that I recommend you don't be tested, recognize that you can't control the decisions of other people. And so they may be tested. What do I mean by this? Well, let's say that you have a family secret and so you don't want to be tested. And you're not. But you have two daughters who are tested. Well, those daughters find out that they're not really sisters, they're half-sisters, because DNA tells them that. Even though you didn't get tested, and even though you have that family secret, that family secret's now come to life because of the decisions of other people. Same way with cousins. DNA tells us about our close relationships 100% of the time. When I say close relationships, I mean second cousins are closer. So if you have any of these relationships that have also tested through DNA, it's going to be able to match you to those people. So even though you may have that family secret, or even though you may have been an anonymous donor, you can't control the actions of other people, and they may find out about your ancestors or your descendants without you testing because they tested and they still match. So I recommend that everybody be tested for DNA. And what I recommend is that if you have family secrets, get them out because they're probably going to be coming out in the next generation or two as more and more people are tested. If you wanted to be an anonymous donor, recognize that now with DNA testing, there's really no guarantee of anonymity you're probably going to find out who you are the father or the mother of without you having to be tested. If you have questions about whether or not you should test, put it in the comments below and I'll give you my opinion, but it's probably that you should be. More viewers, don't forget to subscribe so that you won't miss another episode of Family History Fanatics. And be sure to check out our website, www.familyhistoryfanatics.com so that you can find out about upcoming e-conferences that we're going to be a part of.